What's up guys, Manny from Motor Million and it's time for a little bit of show and a little bit of go on this RSV4. Well, a little bit of go, that's easy, right? This is our go parts and it's a part of the go because we're not going to do everything today but these are the DT Moto velocity stacks that we're going to install they are 3d printed they're pretty and uh, we'll talk to, about them in detail when we get into the inner workings of the bike the other go part is our filter also the flash that goes along with this that's going to wait for the next episode but this these are the go parts for today the show parts we're going to see if this Rizoma sprocket cover fits we're going to do this thing, the TWM fuel cap, which we love because I want to take it out for a ride and that fuel cap is kind of annoying a little bit. A show part is carbon fiber side panels and also there is a other show part that's in here. I'm not going to reveal what it is. You guys have to wait to see until we unwrap this during the video so that you guys see what this really, really special part is. It's really cool. I don't know if you can guess what it is, but we got a lot of work ahead of us. Let's uh, get into the inner workings of this Aprilia RSV4 and then when we put it back together, hopefully it's going to look much nicer and it's going to be much faster. our velocity stacks out guys and let me show you the difference so these are the rear stacks and these are the front stacks and this is where the rear stacks are going to be replaced with if you take a look there they are shorter so the profile is a little bit different and also the height is different and in the front again they're, they're, they're a tiny bit shorter and these are the front stacks that we're going to replace it with and uh, what, what this achieves is the higher the stack it's meant for more for low end torque or more low end power and then the, the lower it is it's meant for upper end power and we looked at Brent Tuning's dyno chart so if you don't put a flash on the bike and change these there is very little loss at the low end which is pretty respectable and on the top end they're showing about a gain of six horsepower on a bike that is dynoing in the 183 horsepower range stock so these are really cool all 3d printed pieces they're all one piece and then I want to show you something else. When we bolt them on, you guys will see it as well. So they've designed it to cover all the bottom side of the airbox over here. This gives it a more of a ram air effect and also it gives this airbox less turbulence and that's what they claim. But their dyno charts speak for themselves. They are showing us the dyno charts of not losing any horsepower on the low range which is really really respectable when you're changing your stacks but again when you see them side by side the, the change is not that drastic maybe some of the angles are different and maybe the whole situation within here and not getting any turbulence with all of those uh, open cavities on the bottom of the air box that probably does something either way really cool piece we're also going to change the air filter while we're here on the Aprilia's RF models which stands for the racing factory but we are going to be changing it to the full F1 filter while we're here Here's our new sprint filter. Again, this is actually a sprint filter as well. It's just made for the OEM specs. And this is our sprint filter F1 filter. It's basically a race filter. If you live in an area that has high pollen, I suggest using the P08, not the P08 F185, which is the race one. But uh, we're using this, we don't have pollen. I actually was part of the initial testing of these filters, I think seven, eight years ago. Uh, we had them on our old S1000RR, that was a 2018 S1000RR that we did the testing on. We wanted to see how much sand and fine dust that's in Miami that gets through the airbox with this. And I think there's still a blog post on our website of the pictures of the old airbox and how much dirt it actually trapped out. This is a pretty easy swap. These stacks are on. They look beautiful. I think it, other than doing what they're supposed to do, they look great, too bad they're all covered up. But let's just change the filter. 
And then we got other stuff to add to make the bike really beautiful. While everything is back on under the engine bay, it was a lot easier than I expected actually. So if you're trying to do this yourself, Brand Tuning has a really good how to video on it. As always, our videos are not instructional videos. We're just showing you guys the process of the builds that we're undertaking. That being said, I wanna put the tank on because we did the go parts, now it's to do the show parts. Our beautiful full six carbon fiber tank side panels are on. These are in the satin finish. I'm holding this in my hand because I didn't mention this when we had the tank out. Remember on the dyno video where we dyno this bike stock, we have to pull the fuel tank off. We tried our extension harness that we have for our Ducati, Panigale V4 and Street Fighter V4 models. Basically this is a coil extension where we could place this wire somewhere, let's say under these tank side panels and then we could just take a coil reading from here for the RPM of the dyno because we want to get a proper RPM reading and not let the dyno guesstimate the RPM. And uh, it's all in the dyno videos why we really want to do this. This didn't work, the plugs look very similar, but it's different. I took down the model number of the plugs that are on this bike. We're gonna see if we can make some extension coils for these bikes. I think if you're someone who really wants to test their stuff and you really want to dyno your bike, this is pretty much a must, unless you really want to take your tank off. It's not that hard, but it's not pleasant to have the bike apart on the dyno. That being said, let's get back to fun stuff. And uh, I told you guys in the beginning of the video that I want to show you something really cool. And it is this beautiful carbon fiber piece. I don't know if you guys guess what this is. This is the X-Trenta tail, guys. It goes into right here, just like this which makes the back of the RS-V4 like the X-Trenta with the winglets on it. We're gonna to have to transfer the seat pad on top of it, but this looks amazing. We also have to transfer the latch mechanism. We're gonna do something with the top part of this. We might put some pearl white on it and try to match the red stuff that's on the bottom. You don't really see it. Imagine this bike is elevated. You're not gonna see that red line of that stock seat pad, but this looks really cool. It's gonna look even cooler when we put the seat pad on it and then we're gonna change our fuel cap and also we still have that sprocket cover to go. Here you go guys, this is the Carbon x tail with the seat pad on it. This seat pad is also available in carbon, we're not too sure, I actually like the way that it says Aprilia and it's a contrast to the carbon here. Let's put it on the bike, worst case scenario we could always change this around. We're digging the looks of this, let's put it on and see how it looks. Well, there it is. I think it's looking beautiful. It looked kind of awkward without the seat pad when I tried it on just to see what it's gonna look like. Now I think it's uh, looking really awesome because it actually is tying in together with all the satin carbon that this bike has. Now this thing has a little bit of a pre-labeling. For those people who know, the X-Trenta has a tail like this. Now this RSV4 has a tail like this. We're continuing right along. Now is the fuel cap. It's very simple to change, but over the years, I think there's enough videos out now how to install the fuel cap that people figure it out that you gotta take the flange apart from the fuel cap when you take it out because it's got no bolts on the top and when you receive a fuel cap, it's got five bolts on the top. Either way, we gotta take it out. It's these things right here. Don't drop your bolts in there. When you take it out, be very careful. I'll take a look inside here. It goes to show you that the fuel caps, the rings around it is not really a gasket. There's a lot of dirt around here and if you come and take a look in the middle, it's completely sealed because this is the gasket that holds it all in place so that nothing leaks out. I'm just gonna try to clean this really quickly, but you'll see it, the dirty pieces around and all of this is here. Maybe I'm even gonna try to just blow this all away before it goes all inside the fuel tank. The 
And here's a quick tip, guys. If you realize on the shots where I put tape around these nuts, it's because these nuts are supposed to fit right in here. If you would, if you turn the fuel cap upside down, all those nuts are gonna fall off. So I just put a little bit of painter tapes around it so that it just gives it a little more thickness. And this way, when I push it in, number one, it's not in the way of the threads, but number two, this is not falling off, which is really cool. Now it's the easy part, the flange is on and the gasket around it is on. As we saw, the gasket really doesn't keep any dirt out from around it, but it doesn't really get in the fuel tank because there's another gasket underneath. And speaking of gaskets, don't forget this, your TWM fuel cap should come with one. If it doesn't have one on it, let us know right away. There's been very few instances, one in a thousand maybe that they're missing, but if you forget to put it on, you're gonna get angry at us saying that it's leaking. Trust me, these things have never leaked over the years. But let's put it on and let's tighten everything up. And that's it guys, it's on there. I wanna mention something because I usually like to give you guys a little bit of insight. There is a lot of knockoff pieces of these fuel caps around. TWM was actually the original inventor of the quick action fuel cap, which where you press down, quarter turn, open up, fill up, and then put this back in. Since they've released these fuel caps, this is probably 20 years ago, there has been a lot of knockoffs around, and I would like to say probably buy the brand that you trust. And if you guys see a big difference in price gaps, it's a good indication what you're buying is probably not genuine. But it looks really cool. There's also coming carbon. In this bike, we're trying to keep the carbon touches to stuff that we want to separate. I always love the finish of these machined fuel caps by TWM, so I usually put these on, but if you want to put a carbon one on, there's nothing wrong with that. Speaking of machine finishes, let's try to see if our Rizoma sprocket cover is going to fit on this bike. According to Rizoma, this probably doesn't fit on this bike, but I have a big suspicion that this might actually fit. So speaking of billet and this piece, this piece didn't fit as much as I would have loved to have this on the bike because it looks so gorgeous. This bottom tab, the offset's not right. This is meant for the older Aplias. If you put it right in front, all the bolt holes line up, but it's an oversight. I thought that Rizoma just didn't try it on the new bikes. I guess they did and it doesn't fit. We might 3D scan this and then try to fix this tab right here and get a new one out of the CNC machine, but I think that may be a little unlikely scenario. It's a lot of work to get one of these pieces out and these bikes are not really, really around that much. But I had another idea that if you put a carbon cover on that looks just like this, we may be able to cut out some shapes of it to see that beautiful 520 conversion kit that's behind it, but also the marking that we put on our front sprocket. But I think that's it for this episode, guys. You guys are probably wondering, you did the stacks, so you didn't flash it yet. Yes, we're gonna put a brand tuning flash on it, guys. I'll keep it for the next episode because there's a lot of features that comes with a flash. One of them being that you could integrate your front turn signals into your daytime running lights. If you get rid of the front turn signals, what does that mean? We're gonna put our Rizoma stealth mirrors on and touch up with most of the stuff that we can on the, with the front end of this bike. I'm gonna keep that for the next episode, but if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Until next time, guys, have a good one.